In today's Nonsense Wars production, we finally disassemble and reassemble a 43362 mini motor. Anyone following Technic Motors probably knows that the 9 volt geared motor comes in light and heavy flavors, but fewer probably know about the internal differences. I didn't really understand them until recently. I had thought both types used similar enough internals such that they suffered from the same unfixable problem, the cracking magnet. Uh, perhaps more on that in a future episode. For now, let's open up this 43362 that recently started making a screeching sound. You can hear it at the beginning of the video. I started by scraping some material off the bottom tabs with a small screwdriver. Once you remove maybe half a millimeter of plastic, you want to pry the back off just enough such that the tabs clear the casing. You should lever from the corners as the rounded part of the shell has much thinner plastic that can deform easily. Now comes the dicey part. The commutators on the back are actually soldered to the LEDs running to the power connector. In order to remove everything cleanly, I would need to remove the front gearbox, which I do not want to do at this point. As such, I'm going to cut the soldered metal with tin snips, uh, trying to leave enough material on each side of the cut such that I can bend them into contact when closing up the motor. Take care not to damage the arms or the bases of the commutators. More on that in a bit. But first, let's see why the motor isn't happy. It seemed like the soldered wires were rubbing on the sides of the armature and making it screech and harder to turn. I'm not sure if this happens often, how it can happen over time, or even if it happened when I opened the casing, but bending the leads away from the armature allowed it to spin quietly and freely again. I took the coils out in order to more easily bend the wires. Only the magnet behind the armature keeps the metal plate in front secure. Uh, you can simply pry the metal off with a screwdriver. Afterward, the armature will just fall out. I found the plate quite fiddly to reinstall. If it doesn't seat right the first time, remove it entirely and seat it again. I think if you try to adjust it in situ, you risk damaging the armature due to the forces involved. Okay, now back to the commutators. As you can see, I damaged a base by pulling too hard and ripping one of the tabs off its pin. I removed some of the material on and around the pin such that the tab fit cleanly and at first, I tried to super glue the tab in place. Unfortunately, the mating surfaces didn't want to bind, so I had to use a soldering iron to melt the top of the pin and re-implement the original riveted joint. Now comes the continuation of the dicey part. We need the cut contacts to touch when I close the casing. I found this very, very fiddly. On both of the 43362 motors I reassembled, it took a lot of trial and error. I made small rounded bends in the metal such that the apexes would connect when pushed together, but specific implementations will vary depending on how you cut the contacts in the first place. It definitely helps to take a little bit more material off the bottom tabs such that the back goes on and comes off more easily. You want to make sure that the armature spins freely in the socket on the back. This can affect the performance. 
the socket felt a little stiff, so I added a drop of machine oil in order to free it up. When installing the back panel, fit the top tabs first and then hinge the bottom into place. Uh, ensure the armature actually goes into the socket or you may damage either or both sides. After a couple of tries, the motor runs again and you can hear the sound or lack thereof uh, at the end of the video. After letting it run for a bit, I compared the no load speed of the rebuilt motor to the no load speed of a known good motor to sanity check any performance degradation. The rebuilt motor appeared to run slightly slower, but then again, it may have run slightly slower in the first place. While this isn't a comprehensive test, the difference wasn't big and I felt good about the fix. Of course, we shall see about reliability in due time. Ultimately, I think LEGO actually improved on the geared motor with 43362. It might be slightly less efficient than its older, heavier sibling, but I think you can repair it more easily, and I think it should break less too. Do note that this disassembly does not apply to the older, heavier motor. Uh, we will look at one of those in the future, even if we cannot fix them yet. On that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day.